Hi everyone, Ross Satchel from Microchip back again. Welcome to episode 9 in our AVR bare metal series. In the previous video, episode 8, we created a USART transmit driver and wrote hex values to the terminal. Then we created a user-defined output stream and redirected that to use printf, allowing us to send formatted strings to the terminal. Since this series will culminate in a project that uses multiple peripherals, we need to make the code modular so we can just include the libraries that we create and use them, rather than writing a new project from scratch every time. To do this, we will need to create header and source files for each peripheral driver. In this video, we will only cover doing this for the USART, but the process is the same for the other peripherals. So let's get started. Open the project from episode 8, which was the USART transmit project. Then we will make a copy of it and then modify it. We can copy it by right clicking on the project name and then click copy. We need to give the copy a name. I will call it AVRDD BM episode 9 and give it a location. I have already added a new folder of this project in my directory and I'll place it there. Now we need to set the copy that we just made as the main project by right clicking on the new project and clicking set as main project. To turn the USART transmit driver into a library we need to create a new header and source file. I will start with the header file. Right click header files under our project in the left pane, click new, then click xc8header.h, then give it a name. I will call mine usart0tx.h since it's intended for use with usart0 and only uses tx, that is transmit. That will then create a header file and place it under the header files for this project. By default, it includes the xc.h header file, so we can use all of our microcontroller's macros. Now the first thing we should do is change the guard condition define name to match our header file name. This guard condition prevents the header file from being included more than once from different sources. In the new header file, there are a bunch of to-dos. Some are relevant to us, others not. We need to include any header files that we used before Insert declarations, also known as function prototypes. Note that there is an outline of how to leverage automatic documentation. To start with, I will move the include for standard io.h to the usart tx header file. I will move the usart function prototypes to the header file. Then I will move the defines that the USART uses to the header file. Now in the main.c file, I will include the header file that I just created. Since my new header file is inside the project folder, I need to place quote marks around the library name. This tells the preprocessor to look in the current project folder for the header file. Now let's build the project to make sure we didn't make any mistakes and we can see the green build successful message in the lower pane. Now we need to create a C source file to go with the header file. Right click on source files under our project, click new, then click C source file. Give it the same name as the header file, except this one has the extension .c instead of .h. Now I'm going to move the function implementations to the new source file I just created. I will also move the new file stream that we redirected printf to use to the new C source file as well. And of course we need to include the usart0tx header file in the usart0tx C source file as well. Then build the project again to make sure we didn't make any mistakes and again we see the green build successful message in the lower pane. 
But since we're writing a modular driver so we can reuse it later in other projects, I want to add some extra functionality to it so it's more useful for various different applications. By that, I mean that I will modify it to support the various available comms modes as well as parity, stop bits and data bits. You may recall from earlier videos in this series that the group configurations were defined in enumerations or enums in the device header file. So let's open the header file as we have previously. First we need to include it and it's avr forward slash io avr 64dd32.h then control click to follow it. Then control F to find and enter USART into the search field. First we see the struct for the USART registers, then under that are the enums. I'm going to start with the USART CH size enum. We can see in the enum are all of the available settings, and at the end of the struct is the data type, which is USART underscore CH size underscore T. Then scroll down a little and we can see the data type for C mode, P mode and SB mode as well. Returning to our USART driver header file, in the USART 0 init function I will add the following data types. USART underscore C mode underscore T, USART underscore P mode underscore T, USART underscore SB mode underscore T, and finally, USART underscore CH size underscore T. Now let's go to our USART driver source file where we will also put those data types in and also variable names. I will name each variable by its bit field so it's easily human readable. Now in the init function, we can just bitwise OR each of those values together and write the whole thing to the control C register. Now I'm going to create a define in the header file for the user to enter the required board rate. Now back in the source file, I can just call that inline function with the board rate parameter. Next, I will also set the alternate TX pin since we're using a Curiosity Nano. We know from the previous video in this series that the Curiosity Nano USART 0 TX pin is PD4, and I will use the same macro to set that up, just like in the previous video. Then we need to set our TX enable, just like the last episode. The last thing for the init function is to redirect printf to use our user defined stream, again, just like we did in the last video. That's all of our USART setup done. Now let's do some testing. In the main.c file, right after we call main clock control, let's call our USART 0 init function, passing it the following macro parameters. USART C mode asynchronous group configuration, USART P mode disabled group configuration, USART SB mode one bit group configuration, and finally, USART CH size 8 bit group configuration. Then let's call printf and print driver initialization success. Make and program the device and open data visualizer. I already have data visualizer set to the required board rate, parity, stop bits, and data bits. We can see it prints, but the first few characters are garbled. What's going on there? Let's connect a logic analyzer to the USART TX pin and see what's going on. So I can see there are some framing errors at the start. Remember, we're using a very slow main clock of 32 kilohertz, and also there's no status bit to check the board rate clock on this device. If we were using a faster clock, say the default four megahertz clock, we would not see this problem. To deal with this, we can simply add a short busy wait in the form of a for loop after our initialization to give the board rate clock time to stabilize. After some trial and error testing, 
I found that for a baud rate of 1200 bits per second, that a suitable busy weight for loop count was about 35. I considered adding some error checking in case the init function parameters were passed in the wrong order, or if the integer values outside the enum range of values were passed. But I decided against it as it would introduce too much code space overhead, and besides, if the USART doesn't print anything, it's fairly clear there's been some sort of error when initializing the USART driver. Having said that, the user can simply look at the data types for each of the parameters and ensure that they are passing the correct parameters for that data type. And then for the sake of brevity, I will assume that the viewer can extrapolate this process for the main clock control function to create header and source files for it. Then in the next video, we will set up the ADC to do a single ended read and to accumulate eight samples. Then we will average those to mitigate any random noise picked up by the ADC during the sampling process. See you in the next video.